Um, first of all, I want to thank the town manager and the administration here for allowing me to give a shot at this. And um, I want to thank also Beth Reynolds, who was our developer here in town. Appreciate all her support and guidance. Um, it's an economic issue, and uh, she's been very helpful at doing that. Um, then I want to thank uh, the Department of Public Works. They've helped me very much in getting it going. And what has to happen here is that the uh, Public Works Department has uh, been helping me, and I'll show you uh, some uh, work that they've been work, uh, working on. And then I got to thank the VA Medical Center in, in Bedford. The VA group came down and uh, did a project for us. They have a construction group of VA veterans who, who do projects all around the state. And they came down and they did our chimney over. And the guys really worked hard, it was hot, and they did a great job. And I do want to thank all the veterans and that group that came from uh, Bedford. They were really, really uh, very helpful. So, I, Michael started this for me. Oh. This is our first time using the system, so please be a little bit patient here because uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Thank you. Okay, I did it. The Valentine Estate, this is where we're starting. And you're gonna see a lot of slides here. And the slides are more to show you what has happened and what we've done in the last few months. And it's also for me. Because I'm telling you, when I put this together, it's nice to see something getting done. So it's, it, it's for both of us. Oh, you want, you want to be? Oh, oh, you're good. Okay. No, no. All right. This shows you the area of the Valentine Estates. It's seven acres. It's a pretty good size estate. In the lower part, you see where the house and barn are. And then you see all the rest of the property that goes towards the, uh, to the north there. So it is a nice piece of land. The house in, was built around the 1750s. And the house has 13 rooms, five bedrooms, three and a half baths, four fireplaces, and it's just a little over 4,500 square feet of living space in the building. I call this the pre-existing conditions. We walked in there, and I guess in the past, the building had been cut up and used for different um, apartments. And it was not in a very good condition. So one of the things we had to do, first of all, was go in there and start to clean it up. And this is what I call the pre-condition. So Michael can slowly go through this. This is what we had to deal with when we walked in. Yes, oh boy. And I'll tell you that the building itself, in, I'm going to try not to get excited tonight. I know my, I, everybody says, oh, you get too passionate about something and all that kind of thing. It is just a fabulous, fabulous save. And I have to commend the town of Ashland for saving this. It is just one heck of a save. But this is what we walked into. And all those carpets, all that stuff was uh, pulled up. We uh, took us over three days to get it to uh, a better situation. There it is, 60 yard container, totally full. That was, that there was just one, there was just one of those. And we had to actually take stuff off the top because it was too high. So they did it, they had a little smaller second one, but. They took it away for us, and that's, that's exactly what was in that building. It took us three days. We are going on, so when you push the button, the new existing conditions. Okay, now, three days later, what did we do? We walked back in there, and we started to rehab the place from top to bottom. I'm talking about lights, I'm talking about the woodwork, I'm talking about the kitchens, I'm talking about opening up floors that look like that. 
Not all of them do, but some of them do. Those are beautiful hardwood floors with the square nails in them, you know, the ancient ones that, it, that everybody would like to pay for it in these days. And this is the major kitchen. The other photograph was the small kitchen that was added on. There's two kitchens in there right now, and hopefully I'd like to get rid of one of them and go back to the original main kitchen. This is a spiral staircase in the back of the house that leads you down into the kitchen and it goes upstairs to the office. There's some of the old floors after we tore up and you can see the repairs that have been made at the bottom here. The older planks versus some of the repairs that somebody has put in there. This is the upstairs, uh, uh, what I would call almost like the office above the kitchen. This is the back of the building, looking out the, slide, uh, the glass windows and sliding onto the balcony. Those are the floors. They were carpeted. We pulled them all up, had to pull all the nails out of the floors, pull everything out of there. And as you can see, the, the good planks, they just need to be sanded and uh, stripped and uh, they'd come back to uh, life again. The bathrooms, they're not bad. They can be taken care of. And that's one of the back hallways that goes to the heading towards the front of the house. Again, more of the floors after we pulled up carpets. This is upstairs looking down to the stairwell. Uh, I, like, I guess I like floors. <laughs> this is one of the four fireplaces. This is one of the fireplaces that's upstairs in the master bedroom at the top of the stairs. And again, it was hardwood floors, and you can see the pieces where they've pieced it in and, or something has happened in the past um, there. But it's, it's, a, it's a gorgeous fireplace. The stairwell. Look, this is the foyer when you walk in. It's been, again, changed over, but you can see it. It's uh, how it's set up, and it, when it goes right through the beginning of the house. This is when you walk through the side door. Another uh, view of it. This is a view looking out the window, heading over towards 14 Carat. Looking out the same window at the barn. Again, looking forward to looking at the wall that's been opened up. The chimney repair by the veterans group. Again, these guys were tremendous. It's just, again, the, the chimney was in deplorable condition. The other one, there's two of them on the house. One of them is not bad. This had, literally had to be taken all the way back down to your, to your rooftop and rebuilt completely. That's when we set the staging up. We started to dismantle. That's the condition of it. It was pretty, uh, pretty <laughs> needed a lot of help. That's taking it right down to the quick and then rebuilding it. And there's the newest one after we washed it down. Got sprayed down, cleaned up. And there's the new chimney put on there for the fire, two of the fireplaces. The barn. In fe late February, beginning of March, um, there's some holes in that roof. And uh, we needed to get it secured because the weather was getting in there and starting to really take a toll on the barn. Um, so uh, we got a tarp on there. That was a problem. I mean, we had a very difficult time. The it, it, it failed on us twice. The wind got under it, it just tore it off in a matter of uh, hours after one time we put it up. As Soon as it went up, the wind came along and tore it right out. We finally got it, so we finally got it secured enough that it was gonna make it through the uh, winter and it covers up two huge holes that are on, this, on the top of the roof there right now. You can also see the boarding. We had to board up all the windows. So, cause some of them were broken um, and we just wanted to get the glass and everything else taken care of. So we boarded it all up. The barn, I can say right now, is pretty, um, go ahead, uh, pretty secured. This is the back of the barn. There's a, another huge door, so it's got two doors at each end, the front and the back, which when you open it up, it, you can see right through it. 
So, but we, we, we closed that. It took us about five guys to get that back door closed. And then we boarded up the door, which is onto the right-hand side there for the time being, just to keep people from not going in there at this time. That's the side of it, facing uh, the other side of it. Now we're going inside. Now I know when you, you look at the outside of that barn, you're going, ugh, not so good. And that's true. But inside, it is unbelievable. These rafters, I've had experts who do barn restoration come down. They th love this. They think that this is a gem, a gem, a gem. It is hand carved, you can see that, and it's solid as a rock. Solid. And it just shows you some of the things that are still left there from way back when. Another view of the beams in there. It goes up, it has a balcony on both sides of it. So you've got the horse stables down below and balconies. There's the storage area and the stairs on one side that goes up to the balcony. And that's on the right hand side. There's the horse stalls. Still intact, still there, still very, very strong. That's the inside of it. I've been told by the expert that most of it's chestnut. Solid chestnut wood. So the barn is a great barn. It just needs a little help. Then we started with the land clearing. The land clearing was on the, what we, if you're looking at the house, it would have been on your left-hand side, facing 14 carat next door. We started doing the land clearing, and I hired a contractor to come out. And that's what it did look like with a lot of poison ivy, a lot of overgrowth, a lot of um, just uh, not too good of a look. That's where you got, no, you went the other way. And that's, again, some of the stuff that was there when we first started. Now, as you can see in the background, we started bringing in some heavy-duty equipment into, onto the site. And there's a machine and a half. Let me tell you, that thing is amazing. Amazing what it does. It grabs the trees, cuts the trees, lays it down. And it just, it, it earned its keep. And the, the tree company, you can see the blade there. The tree company was there for, uh, for three days. And we pulled out everything that you can see that's gone now. And it, it, was, a, it, it was a work. We had a tractor trailer truck, and we had a chipper there, a huge, huge chipper. And we filled up that tractor trailer truck. Oh, there it is. There's the chipper in the truck. Three times. Three times full of chips. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, how, what, that's, where it, that's what we left. When they came in and left it, that's, that's how they walked away from it. So what it is now is a, it's a huge open area to the left-hand side of the house. These are more views of uh, what they did. And then, the, then the land management. After the company came in and cleared out all the trees, we had... The, the scope of this, the uh, land and the way it looked was not good. There's rocks, there was, there's a bunch of stumps, there's a bunch of things. So I had some contractors give me some prices, but you know, I said, well, wait a minute, maybe the town guys want to come in and work on a couple of Saturdays. And they did. They came in, oh, and, we, and oh, we've only had one Saturday because of the fact that the weather has not been conducive on Saturday, or well, last Saturday it was just a little too hot. This is what we started off with. Town guys came in with their equipment. We started pulling stumps. We started uh, backfilling where the, the grade went down. We, there's one of our town trucks with a couple of stumps in the back of it. There's our little mini excavator, which is a fabulous little machine for this kind of a property. Starting to pull out all the poison ivy and starting to back, pull back 
grade all of it so that we get all that green junk out of there and opening it up to uh, be a level uh, field. That used to be there. Sure. There's the guys, that's what the, we were working on that day. And it starts, this is what you finally see is when you get, take all that green off the, uh, off the top, you'll start to see how it's just, just really nice, good dirt there. And this was fascinating. As we started to dig down and started cleaning all the stuff away, the wall opened up. Now, all I knew was if you look way over there, you see the wall, and the wall's pretty much only three feet high. And that's what I always thought the wall was to be. It was three feet high. It's not. It is almost a six foot high wall. As we started digging down, that opened it up. So we found, oh, wow, this is, <laughs> this is nice. And again, it's really nice because it's been covered up. So it's not deteriorated. It's, it's, it's really in pristine condition. So as we took all of that out of there, we said, oh boy, now we're gonna have to grade it so we can have that wall show. I want the wall to show. So one of the things is we just left it over there and as we're gonna, we're gonna go back to continue on the front near the roadside, pulling it all out to show the wall and then finish up cleaning up along this area right in here now. So hopefully by the time it's finished, it'll just be a flat area graded nicely and I'd probably like to throw some grass seed in there for the fall and see how that plays itself out. Because I'm hoping as my vision of the property, there's only one way in and one way out, but there is a road that comes up around the back. And hopefully at the end of that wall there, there'll be a, we can continue that road so that you can go out. So there should there would be just an entrance and an exit right by that wall, but we got one big, huge, tree stump, we're gonna have to get out of there. But uh, that is a, that's the vision of where we're going with the land. What's next? Good question. Well, then push the button. And we have one way of looking at things. The municipal concepts. This is ideas and things that has happened, and we've talked about that meeting, what was it, in October. And these are things that have been, some people have just called me and said, David, blah, 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 blah. good, well, let's talk about it. One of the things tonight is, as we get through this, if you have an idea of what you would like to see this turn into, I want you to tell me the pros and the cons for it. I want you, not me, not anybody else, think about it. I want it to be X, okay? Now, if I have it X, what do I want to do with it? What's the pros if I do X? What's the cons if I do X? And I want you to think about that because tonight, this whole thing is to start for us to get an idea of where we want to go with it. This place is worth saving, but we got to figure out where we want to go with it. And once we kind of have at least one or two or maybe three ideas of where we want to go, then the administration and everybody else can sit down there and start thinking about getting quotes and getting in some information and finding out what the costs are and we continue this process with your help. But that's what I need tonight was to get you guys to decide and help us, give us a direction. So the municipal uh, ideas were, of course, the food pantry, which we have here, which is very small, it, and its needs are growing, growing, growing. There's been an idea, another senior center, That's okay. Uh, human services, a human service building with everything in it. All of those, the food pantry, the senior center, the human service, the administration people, those types of uh, taking them that are located here at the senior center and moving them to there. 
There was some discussion at school administration. The school administration could use some office spaces. Should we get them out of the schools and move them over there? And then the Ashland Housing Authority. That was, they were sent me a nice letter stating the fact that uh, Park Road is uh, 40 seniors living at Park Road and they're in a structure that's 50 years old. And they would like to think about you know, addressing somewhere along the line, moving into something that's a little bit more updated. So those are the municipal things. Private, private, private. A working farm, it used to be. And all the land that you didn't get to see, which is on the right-hand side, which is that big section from when we saw the picture at the beginning on the house, all that land, there were some wetlands over there, and I don't know quite yet how much. But there's, a, there's gonna be a little bit of wetlands, but most of it is good, fertile, growing land. It used to be a farm. Back in the 1700s, there was horses, cattle, everything out there. So the dirt, trust me, I know good dirt. It's good dirt. It is a very, very rich, rich area out there. Restaurant. People have said, oh, that's, that's great, Sudbury Inn. No, oh, there you go, there's a restaurant. Can it be a restaurant? Maybe. Farm to table facility? Absolutely. Private public events center. That barn? Hmm, that could be a great idea. A vineyard. Let's start growing our own Ashland wine. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sounds pretty good. I know you're smiling. But yes, it, these are ideas that have been thrown out there. I don't know. Let's go to the next one. These are municipal conceptual ideas and some of the cons about it. And this is what I'm going to be asking you guys. Reconstruction costs. When we go to the public, first of all, we've got to pay state prevailing wages. State prevailing wages is double <laughs> whatever you and I make. So anything that the town does, you are paying top dollar. That's reconstruction cost from the, this side. Cost of management. There is a facility in Medway. They built a brand new facility onto a historical house. You'll see that a little later. They hired a management team to operate it. Does all the maintenance, all the taking care of it, all of the f uh, physical booking of it. They have all the facilities. Uh, it's a, he's a facility guy for that site. And he takes care of that site. And that's his job. So then it's a cost of management. I did a, a quick uh, analysis. Do you know the town of Ashland has 20 buildings we take care of today? 20. So, cost of management. Total cost to be maintained. With those 20 buildings, the town maintains those 20 buildings. Do we need 21 here to cost maintain it? Mow the grass, take care of it, heating systems, air conditioning, all that. Something we gotta think about. Then you remove it from the tax roll. It becomes, it's, it's, it's a town building. We don't charge for it now. We cannot get taxes from it. So that gets removed. And I'm sure that there are other concepts, but we'll get to that later. Establishing a public-private partnership. Now, if I had one megabucks the other night, I probably would want to buy this place and become a public partnership with the town, see what we can do together. But I didn't win it, but we have to find somebody. I find out that part of my job right now is to take this property and make it the look with what I got to work with, which is taxpayers' money, which, which you guys appropriated, and make it look the best I possibly can to maybe find somebody who wants to invest in it. Because that's 
what we call establishing a public-private partnership. The town manager has some great ideas about what we can do from the, from the public side in regards with the ideas of that. So that's finding a partner that, I don't know if he's out there or she's out there, but maybe we can. And the cost associated with that. Do they want the whole property? Do they want to run the property? Do we run the property for them? There's those things that you've got to start thinking about as to when you get into that public-private partnership, what's their responsibility, what's our responsibility? And how much is our responsibility? And then, then you go from there. With the help of Beth, we've got a whole bunch of little ideas here. And I want you to take a look at these, and I'm hopefully going to, well, just leave them up for a little bit longer so you can take a look at them. Because these are ideas that Beth found on, on, on the site. I found a few of them also. When I started going into this thinking, oh, man, what can we do with this? I love, I got, oh, I love it, I love it. And I, I got anxious about it, and I kept looking for it. And, and she found things and sent to me. So I wanted you to take a look at some of the things that we see. Hmm? Well, you can, if they want to read it. You went too fast. You did. That, that takes a little bit of reading. I'm slow. Thank you. Here are some of the potential ideas. We use this as models. Because, again, you need, to, you need something to visualize as what we would like to go with. Everybody good with this one? The Fair House. This is in Medway. The house is the historical house. And what they did was they built an addition to it. And if you look, there's the addition to it. These are the inside of it. And this is run by a management. It, town owns it. But management company runs it. You can see the historical house there on the left and the new addition on the right. This is still in the Thayer House, yep, the inside of it. Sure. Our barn is bigger than that. Our barn is uh, 60 by 40. What they spend. I forgot what that number was. I guess Michael just reminded me because I, I got my numbers are getting great. 3.5 million to build that. Just to give you an idea of what it takes to build a facility that meets all the uh, requirements of ADA, all the safety issues nowadays, and, and to build it. And, and it's got the industrial look. If you look at it, you see the big pipe at the top with your he heat and air conditioning. But 3.5. The CPA bought it, so as they keep renting it, they're bringing in revenue. And they said that they rent it a lot. This place gets rented a lot. If you guys don't realize, this thing has been booked for weekends after weekends after weekends. It's just that it's only, it only can hold so many people. But it, event space is needed. So that their house. Nope. Oh, here we go. My favorite. The Gibbet Hill Grill. This is in Groton. This is a farm, and they grow all their own stuff. And they have the barn, which you see right there, is the Gilbert Barn. I called the Gilbert company, and I asked um, the manager, and she didn't want to talk to me. She says she, so she forwarded my question on to the owner. And the Gilbert Barn is, is a, a beautiful barn but I asked, I said, listen, how much does it cost you to renovate your barn? And uh, the guy finally got back to me, and he says, well, why are you asking? <laughs> I said, well, well I'm, I'm just asking, because, you know, I got a barn, and 
I'm interested in trying to do something with that. And they said, well, you know, you figure, you figure $500 to $700 a square foot. And I'm going, what? I said, yeah. I said, okay, nice talking to you. Thank you very much. Put it in writing. I'll have it for another day. This is the inside of it. They have separate rooms. They have a whole facility like this. You can see the huge fireplace in the middle. Now, that's why it's that money. You can see that. When you figure that, what? For them? I think it was about, yeah, about one and a half million dollars for them to get this going. This is the barn at the Wright Farm in Sturbridge. Maybe some of you have been there. Again, you look at it. Did you look at our pictures of the rafters? What the barn kind of looked like? Doesn't that kind of look like one? Again, looks like they had a wedding there. Vinegar Hill. You'll see some more pictures at the end of this Vinegar Hill. It's a barn. Look at that barn. Doesn't it look like our barn? Look at the chairs in there. It's so like it's seating. It's got an event going. We're going to have an event there. Um, again, this is another one. It was built in 1887, and they used a lot of the stuff that still they found there or they uh, kept going, but it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous looking thing. These are some more pictures of this Vinegar Hill. This is the barn itself. There's the house. There's the side of the barn. So they opened it up. That is now where they have the cocktails in all. They have a whole garden there. And it's, it's got the uh, tables and all that. And they, that's where they set it all up for a, uh, an event. And then they go from the outside, inside. And there's another shot of the barn. There's the stage. Mm. Could we do that? Look at the, and I called them, and they say, the, mu the music there is unbelievable. They do have a great, of, um, a huge amount of people who are pretty damn well known, goes, goes there and plays. And they have it set up like that, and it's, um, it holds, I think, about 240 people. But that is, again, some way of looking at our bar. That'd be the end. Those are just ideas. Now, it's your turn. Um, I don't know where you start. Who wants to start? And uh, you know, I have to, I'm going to have to write some things down because if you got it. Uh, but you know, it's, I just wanted to let you know that I had a call today from one of my mentors. I haven't heard from her in a very long time. Her name was Isabel Harris. Ooh, some of you know. Isabel, um, I don't know what to tell you, but she's, she's somebody whose name is, belongs in this town in, in a high regards. And she called me, and, and I, I was very surprised to hear from her. And she said, oh, I'm just here to bust you and make your life difficult. And I said, thank you, Isabel. Nothing's changed. And I said, I said, well, what do you, she says, well, I want to just let you know, I'm, I'm really glad about your forum there, about your, what you're going to do and what you're trying to do, and I just want to put my two cents in worth for social services. And if you know Isabel, that's all she knows. And she was very adamant about it, and we had a great conversation, and it really made my day. It really made my day to hear from her and to hear that nothing's changed, and she's still adamant, and she wanted to put her two cents in as to thinking that we seriously have to look at her social service, the social services, and try to get them downtown where they belong. She's been adamant about it. She says, I hope to see it before I disappear. And I says, well, I hope you do too. So I just wanted to make that mention, because it made my day to hear from Isabel. All right. Your turn. Who wants to start? Yeah, I guess you gotta, yeah, they gotta go up.
yeah, you gotta go up to here? Yeah, oh, yeah, I guess you do. At Bruss 38 Olive Street, uh, I'm looking at this Valentine Estate, and it's a pretty house, I'll agree. I don't have any ideas what usage is it, but when I look at that house, I see a, a, a wall, a rock, rock wall. It looks out of place. I don't know. Every time I drive by the house, I says, that is an ugly rock wall, even though it's old, and it doesn't do anything for the house. And I think that's one area you should start. And first of all, maybe get rid of that rock wall. Or... <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll... Well, I I heard I heard the I heard the cons. <laughs> I did hear the cons on that. That's for sure. Thanks, Ed. I, that's okay. All right. And what, uh, Martha? Come on up, Mr. Shapiro. It's good to see you here. Much, much of me left. Oh, come on. But, but, but what I have left, I'm, give, I'm giving it away. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm Martin Shapiro, and I've been here for 20 odd years, maybe 25, I have no idea. At any rate, um, one of the things I've seen here in town, which, uh, which needs improvement, we have, a, we have a, a, a theater group here in town. They get up and they make plays and, and, uh, and, and they're, they're struggling. The, the plays are put on at the uh, VFW building. Flat floor, you can't, if you sit in the back, you absolutely can't see the front. Uh, the, the, we need a theater of sorts. And with a sloping uh, display of seats, my, 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 I'm having difficulty with my language, unfortunately. Um, and, 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 and good acoustics. The, the VFW building has no acoustics whatsoever. <laughs> you can go in there and, and fall asleep trying to hear something. <laughs> but at any rate, I think that's a, a, a something that we should consider. Uh, and I, I know that we only put on one player every few months or something like that. But there will be other groups who will want to put on plays here in town. And I, I think it's, you know, I don't know how attractive a, a, a facility w w that we would have here would be to other towns and other groups. But it's worth considering, and uh, I would say, let's consider a, uh, a, a an auditorium of sorts in the, in the new buildings. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on up there. Hi, Scott Lubell, relatively new to town, um, lived in Natick for a number of years and was a member of the board, on the board of the Natick Community Organic Farm. Uh, and that was actually a public-private partnership between the town and a nonprofit board that I was on, uh, which uh, supported, uh, we had a farmer and an assistant farmer and eventually uh, another office manager. So uh, we had programs for children to come and work with the animals, grow vegetables. Uh, so uh, we had a meeting room. So we had, um, you know, uh, which was open to the public. Uh, it was also booked for parties. Uh, I could see um, that being one use of this building. I, I think that it, there's, uh, perhaps opportunity to incorporate something like that into uh, with other purposes, uh, office space and so on. But just the thought to, that seems, I see elements of it in, in a number of uh, the ideas that are up there. I saw the public-private partnership, I saw the farm. Um, so just wanted, and, and another, and Mr. Shapiro reminded me 
of the uh, Center for the Arts in Hopkinton. Uh, there's uh, maybe, there may be some models in area communities that we can look, we can look at. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on, Jim. Hi, I'm, I'm Jim Zabrowski. I'm the chair of the Council on Aging for Ashland. And my, I, it was my idea to have the senior center move over there. And I just want to kind of explain where I was coming from with that. I've been to probably about a half a dozen senior centers in the, in the area. And the one, the only one that really impressed me was one that was in a really old house and had a very homey feel. And the building itself not, not only was welcoming, but just made people relax and just fit in. And I was just impressed with the way it, it enabled the, the senior center to function. Are there problems with the idea? There are big problems with the idea. Um, the, this house has a lot of rooms which are smaller than would be ideal for a senior center. Um, and I think it would be difficult to make it a senior center. Um, and I have also feel like I have heard better ideas tonight in the presentation. But I would like us to keep in mind that what we need in a senior center is a warm and inviting space. So I'd like to withdraw my suggestion for here, but encourage the town to transform this building to make it what a senior center ought to be. Okay? Thanks. I can add curtains. <laughs> Steve Mitchell from uh, Newcastle Road. And first of all, David, great presentation. Really well done. Who did it for you? <laughs> <laughs> But really good. But I'm going to piggyback on what Jim was just saying because I've been an advocate for using this potentially as a, as a, an accessory building for for this space here because we're crunched for space here. And you know maybe the right thing to do is to explore expanding this building at some point. But I was uh, advocating, or and I will continue to advocate potentially for using it for enlarging our food pantry and our human uh, services department because there's tremendous needs in both departments. But I will tell you, I really like the farm idea. Um, Ashland has a working farm. And unfortunately, they're getting forced out. Uh, they're kind of in between potential properties there. It's Upswing Farm. They're over on South Street. They uh, are one of our key vendors at the farmer's market. Uh, great people. Uh, unfortunately, the farm that they that they work is getting sold to developers, and uh, so they're looking at a couple of locations. Uh, hopefully, they'll still be with us at the farmers market, but we don't know. And uh, but uh, you know, so I guess I'm 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 torn because I really do like the farm concept, and you know. Uh, is there a way to salvage Upswing Farm and keep them here? Uh, you know, it's just not too many places, not too many communities have working farms. So, Steve, that's a, I didn't know anything about the Upswing Farm, um, but maybe that's something we can do pretty easily. Maybe all that land that's on the right-hand side we look, find our conservation areas, blah, 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 and we turn over the rest of it. Clear it and open it up and lease it to the upswing farm people and start to grow. It's something I think, you know, hopefully, I mean, I don't know where they are and maybe that's too late, but maybe there's another farm that would like to take that over. And correct. I mean, if there's one in Natick, maybe there's others. And it's something I think that maybe that's the e one of the easy things that we can do right away. Land clear it, open it up, and, and, and get a farmer in there. Because I've always seen the, I see the barns sometimes, you have your uh, farmer's markets in November and then early in February or something like that. What a great place to open up that barn and have the whole farmer's market right there. 
Then we can have yard sales. Everybody gets a 10-foot space in the wintertime. You have a yard sale. All of us who hate to do it in our own yards, well, you rent a space. You put it up, you sell your items, you know, I mean, antique shows. There's so many things that can be, you can start to think about it, but the farm situation is good, and I didn't know about that, and that's something maybe we should look at about how to get that land cleared off and used. Go ahead, Joe. I actually am just stretching my legs. Oh. <laughs> good evening, uh, Joe Mignani, Two Hopper Lane. About three and a half years ago, when the, the idea came up that this property was going to be sold and maybe possibly developed, uh, Carl Hackinson called me up and said, hey, Peter's old house, Peter Pathé, who used to be a classmate of ours, it was called the, the Pathé Mansion. Um, I don't know if you remember Pathé movies or Pathé films, or the, the real-to-real films. Uh, those were actually made in the barn. So there's some historic value to, to that particular area. Um, since then, um, Peter has often gone and worked with uh, Microsoft and Bill Gates and graduated with all those guys and retired billionaire. But, and I did call him up and I asked him uh, if he'd be interested in buying his old house and donating it to the town. And, and it was serious. It was a serious conversation that we had. Um, Unspeknown to me, and though I've known Peter for a number of years, his... Um, his comment to me was, I, I think I'd buy it and burn it because he had some bad memories, because, which is kind of sad. Um, but anyway, so th to go on with the conversation, with respect to, I can see this as a multifunctional location. Like you suggested, the farm on the right-hand side, you could sell the wares. Um, I love the idea of the possibility of making that an event location, doing the barn over, because we are losing tax dollars. You know, so it's coming off the tax roll. So this is some way, a one way, that that could be self. Um, so yeah, it, it it would make money to support itself, and we wouldn't, you know, whatever monies that were made uh, that to keep it up type of deal. Um, I, I love the idea. I, I, and as a matter of fact, I discussed this with you a while back about the historical society in Holliston, and I mean that place is constantly being utilized. And they're making, re they're making money. Uh, they're overbooked. They can't, and there's not enough venues for these types of establishments to, to happen. Um, and the other ones that are in town are costing an arm and a leg that, you know, they're, they're actually starting to lose some money. Uh, and I got that from inside sources. So the, the unfortunate thing is, you know, people are looking for other venues. And this would be a great venue if it's done and, and completed and designed right. You have, you have a beautiful, as you saw, the, those, those windows looking out, the, the port windows and the views. There would be an ideal location for weddings or events or anything like that. And on the other side, you'd have the farms. And, and you can even utilize that for musical or other type of uh, art. So I can see there's a multifunctional location. And, and, and to me, I think that would be a great idea. At one point in time, and I had discussed this with uh, Mr. Herbert, about the possibility of putting the school admin administration in, you know, into the uh, the house, because uh, it is large and you can make those rooms a little bit bigger by knocking down some walls and stuff if necessary, and that's opening up some classroom space where they're currently utilizing, you know, office space right now for the school admin. But th that's something to consider now that we have a new school that's coming on, you know, on board in you know four or five years. Um, I don't know what you know what their plans for you know, admin uh, offices or whatever. But I, I see this as a multifunctional uh, location. I, I really do, and I thought it right away. Uh, one of the things that I had thought a while back was the Park Road and putting, you know, another 40 units up there. But people didn't like that idea with the 100 and something units. And, you know, 40 units may not be, you know, well received as well, but which is unfortunate because I think that we could build a better living location for those folks and richly deserved. And now you're opening up an area there for downtown parking, opening it up type of deal. So again, there's, there's multifunctional things that we could utilize if the town does this right, like they did in Medway. They're generating revenue. It's self-sustaining. And I, and I would really like to see that happen. I, I, I think we have something good here. And I think everybody in this room agrees that we have something good here. Um, we just have to make sure we do it and do it right the first time. 
That's all. Thank you, David. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Joe. Um, the educational side of this, I'm starting to think about this. You start to bring the kids involved in farming. You start to have classes there and teaching them. You have the farmer who brings in his sheep and his cows and everything else and teach the kids about these things. So this could be a fabulous educational area. Then you go into the barn and you have your class or you have some discussions on it with whoever's teaching the classes. But you go back into the old barn and you have it documented so you can see what used to be there. And you, you start to take these kids and get them, you know, how many kids know how to milk a cow? Huh? I mean, uh, I, knew, I knew that. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you start, when you start to think about it, because you you, Joe, you was talking about multi, it could be all encompassing of a lot of things. And that's what I'm, I'm, my thought process has always been is, is that making a petting farm or making it so the kids get educated, making them grow their own vegetables, starting the farmer's market and having it there, starting to educate people on why did we do this? We're saving something for somebody. It's not us that are going to see all of this. And I, every time I go in that building, that's all I can think about. And I read the history of all the families that have been in there since 1750, and I'm walking the same floors as whoever did that before, it's just fabulous. It is, you know, and once you get in there, you get all excited about it, your head starts going crazy, and that's why I say, I, I gotta calm down. I, I, I don't wanna get too wacky with this thing, because it is a potential, and I want you to think about it. I really do want you to open it up and open your minds tonight. Let's see if we can get some direction on this. Yours. Dave, we, uh Sorry. Appreciate your passion. It's, it's obvious and it'll be contagious. So thanks for your work with what you're doing so far. It's great. Uh, so my name is Glenn Travis. I live at uh, 35 Franklin Road, right up the street here. And I also have a business here in town, GMT Home Designs. And so when it comes to buildings of historical value, I can really appreciate the fact that we you know, went to school and said as a town, we want to preserve, you know, this building. And so I'm grateful we did that. I think in other communities that I do design work in, for example, Weston, one of the things that they care about deeply on scenic roads is preserving the stone walls, even if they're in tough shape. So I know there's a lot of, you know, comments about that. I'm, a, I'm of the venue, let's do what we can to preserve the overall look that was intended and even make it better. And so I think that stone wall, just be careful how deep you dig because it needs to have a footing. You know, so you might have, right, okay. So I have a question and then a few random comments. My first question is, does Ashland currently have a public-private partnership with one of the other 20 buildings or so that we manage and oversee? Have we experienced anything like that yet in town? I, I don't think there is. I mean, you want this? Yeah, I do. Um, so that's a good question. I think we have partnerships with different organizations for the field, so it's like a much smaller much smaller scale, um, but you know you have certain in lieu of types of contributions like in terms of maintenance of the field and an organization might maintain the field in exchange for being able to use it every now and then. So okay. nothing with the buildings, but with, we're not a stranger to public private partnerships. Okay, okay. So personally being a business owner, I think like a business owner where I wanna be in the black. So I, I strongly believe that tax revenue is important for Ashland. Uh, I think having a balance of that public and private use, I think is extremely important. So if we can figure out and have a point person uh, in the community that can work in a way where we can pull in private sector money to help you know, deal with the cost of, of this, because when I hear five to $700 a square foot, that's normal to me. I heard a lot of people react to that, but I see kitchens at $1,600 a square foot. And so when you think of a post and beam building, and to preserve a look of a post and beam building, uh, there's a fair bit of labor that can potentially go into that from a structural perspective. And so the look of it is amazing. I'm over at 60 Pleasant Street, and uh, the owner of that facility 
preserve the, the back portion, the mill portion, the area that I'm in, and every time I have a client walk in, they absolutely love the look of the post and beam, the smell of the wood. It's very attractive and inviting to people to come into my office over at that place. So I believe that barn has to be preserved on the inside. As far as the cladding goes, you know, the sky's the limit with what we want to do there as long as it works with the, the house right next door. I think the other thing to note is can the seven acres handle an additional building or two? So if we want to bring in a private, you know, enterprise to help out, we've got the, you know, 4,500 square foot house. Quite frankly, from a private perspective, that's going to get filled up pretty quickly with whether it's admin facility or office. Um, pretty quickly. That's not a big building if you think in terms of buildings. Uh, and then uh, parking, we know parking downtown has always been uh, an issue we're trying to resolve in town. Clearly, we want to be wise where we want the cars coming in and parking, you know, in, in that lot. And then I was just at, uh, I had a client meeting in Winchester uh, on Friday, and I went to get there past Wilson Farm in Lexington, I don't know if anyone's ever been there or not. Wow, that is a working farm with greenhouses, a post and beam building. I wanted to keep buying more blueberries and more strawberries. It was just that inviting of a space to, to, to be in, but you need to have a, a farm that can handle, you know, taking over the expense of, you know, renovating a building of this sort. You're, you're in the range of 1.5 easy on the low end to 3 million all day long. And so my vote is let's figure out a way for the town to use it for uh, uh, lecture halls, for assemblies, for renting out, for a source of revenue, but also say for an architecture firm or an engineering firm, whoever, to rent out or buy space in the Valentin building. Thank you. Yolanda Greaves, 127 Prospect. I'm also the host of the show Around the Clock, and we are actually live streaming this event. So we've let people know if they can't come out, they could post. So someone uh, did post about the fact that they like the idea of the event space in the barn and a farm possibly, but the other idea was could we do in the house some kind of co-working space? A lot more people are working from home so it could be still used for events on weekends, but we could open up during the week and create a co-working space where someone can come in, rent it for an hour or two. We could keep the feel that we have at 60 Pleasant Street with that barn and still make it available for rent. So that was just another idea that came up. It's, it's very dangerous to tr uh, trigger th this group for, for ideas. Uh, I like what David had to say. I like what Joe and Yanni had to say. And, you know, I, and, and it'd be nice if we could combine that with uh, some more ideas. And I had one a long, long time ago, and I almost forgot about it. And as a matter of fact, I did forget about it, except it, it got triggered in this atmosphere tonight. A long time ago, I proposed that we have an FM radio station here in town. It, 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 uh, I, if we do it right, we get advertising, it'll pay for itself. Uh, and it, it'll pay the town something, too. Uh, it would be wonderful for, the, for, the, for our high school students to, to, to actually utilize the station and, uh, and, 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 well, for anybody who wants to, to use, utilize it. But uh, it, it's, a, it's an idea that's, that's worth pursuing. I, I think we need, we, we need to set aside some space within this property for one 
but uh, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it sh initially at least, it shouldn't take up much space at all. So, thank you. So I love all the ideas. I love multi-use. I'd love to see included some kind of art space so that artists might be able to have little sub-communities. In Needham, they have um, a gentleman, Steve Bramfman, who's part of Team Kermit, started a um, artist condo co-op and each person bought their little space and there's all different kinds of artists in the building so maybe there can be one section like that generating revenue either for rent or purchase. I love the stone wall. I hope you keep working on that and it can look beautiful if the landscape is nice but right now it doesn't look beautiful because there's no landscape so I don't, wouldn't be afraid of keeping the stone wall up but I love the multi-use idea. Thank you. Ideas? You didn't think I'd be quiet the whole meeting, did you? Um, we did. Um, I, you know, personally, I really like the Vinegar Hill idea. I don't know if you know that resonated with everybody, but it's such a unique um, and beautiful um, facility that uh, I think that would be something that is really, really would look really, really good in Ashland. The thing is, is how do you make that a reality? How do you make any of these things that are private use a reality? Because um, you're talking about a private entity, a business, spending money to come in and renovate a facility, and then hopefully there's enough of a market, or they have to feel like there's enough of a market there to, um, to recoup their investment and ultimately make a profit. So what can we do to help incentivize the type of use that we want? And one of the things that we do, you can think of this as, you know, the 3.5 million that we've already spent as, I'm gonna use the term house money, that's probably, um, if you're a taxpayer, not really the way you wanna think about it. But, um, but, you know, ideally, if there's somebody who wants to come in or a business that wants to come in and, and buy the facility, you know, ideally you would wanna have the $3.5 million as a purchase price. But let's just say a, a, a developer or a, a company comes in and says, you know what, we would really like to do something like Vinegar Hill, but we could only afford to pay you $500,000 because we're going to put X amount of dollars into renovating this facility. Um, the town could go ahead and do that uh, if it follows the proper procurement laws. Um, the town has the ability, there, there are costs of construction, there are permit fees, there are water sewer connection fees, and uh, those are things that we can utilize as, as or wave to utilize as an incentive to get the type of use that we want out of it. And then that's where you can start talking about piggybacking on some of these ideas that we've talked about. So you could have something like Vinegar Hill where you have an actual stage, a private use stage, and maybe a restaurant in the house, but maybe as part of the transfer of that property and maybe as part of a break for the purchase price, you develop a, an agreement with the, with the owner, the new owner, that says that, um, Ashland Community Theater can use it four times a year. Or a different, uh, you know, artist can use it as like an open house, maybe quarterly. And then you start really start tacking on a lot of those, um, a lot of these uses that we've talked about tonight and these ideas. Um, again, I think, I think this has been really good. And David, I want to echo everybody's uh, thanks for the work that you've done and put, putting into this presentation as well. And thank everybody for their ideas. But... Um, just my job's going to be how do we make this thing go once these ideas are, are figured out so I'm just trying to throw a few things out there hopefully generate some more alright does it, there was somebody else here let's okay he's, he's willing to buy the barn <laughs> So, <laughs> anyways, my opinion is we got to utilize the buildings over here. Um, we want to utilize it 365 days a year. We don't want to have a farm that's only seasonal, okay? We want to focus on using the two buildings, either for the school, for entertainment, or whatever. So that's what we should focus on. And those size buildings with 
with that size and you want to draw these kind of people, we need parking. And you have a farm over there, your parkings are very limited. And it's going to be, if you want to do this, again, my opinion, you want to run it as a business. And the business should be enough people for parking because a lot of people, one person in a car, you have 200 cars, you've got to be, find a place to park those. And at the same time, let's run it as a business. Let's make money for the town and let the town use it too. That's my opinion. You're absolutely correct. That's why one of the first things I did was clear that land on that one side. Because the first thing you're going to start thinking about for a project like this is you need parking. And hopefully once that all gets cleared out, I can do a measurement and we can say right there is going to be a 60 car parking lot. And again, it, I was more thinking about the exit. Because if you drive into the driveway, you come in, there's only four spaces at the front of the house. Four. Then it's just a road that goes all the way around the back and up, and it's dead end at the back end of the barn. But I want to continue that down to, heading towards the 14 carat, down to where the wall ends. And as I said, we got a couple of big stumps that got to get out of there before they're in the way. So there will be a, quote, circular thing. We all know when you start thinking about businesses coming in or doing something like this, one of the most important things is parking, access, handicap access, and, and accessibility. Well, we don't have any snow here. So uh, I'm, 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 that's why that, that was the first thing that got done was that clearing out. I, and as I said, I haven't started on the other side. But again, trying to address that. You can't have a business. We can't ask somebody to come in and look at it and get a visual. Because the first thing as a businessman, where am I going to put parking? And that's why that got cleared out. And hopefully it's going to get leveled off and it's going to get, we're going to throw some grass seed down there so that that person, there's parking right there for at least 60 cars. And let's not talk about what's over on the other side yet. But those are just concepts, those are ideas. Michael has a big issue, and we all have an issue. It's all this. Tonight, before we get out of here, I don't want to hold everybody up here, we need to get some kind of a direction. I have a little money left from the first seed money that was given to me through the CPA last year. And I need to get some kind of direction as to what should we be looking at. Should I be looking at clearing more land? Should I be looking at trying to get some uh, inspectional services and some contractors for the barn? Should I be, what? Should I look at the house? The house is not in bad shape, but do I start tearing down that kitchen? Very soon you'll see where next to the barn there's some plywood and there's a concrete, uh, what used to be a garden. That's all going to be taken care of before the summer's over. We're going to take that back out of there. There, used to be, there was a fire there. We're going to re-wall it, and I'm most likely going to get rid of that concrete. And then if somebody wants to put a patio in at later date, they can put one in that doesn't, is not rotten like that one is. So we're gonna, that, that's one of the things I can say that is going to happen very soon. Is that walled off? We put the clapboards back on there, paint it a yellow, and get rid of the, uh, the wall concrete. But one of the things, uh, you know, you asked, somebody asked about a point person. We have Beth here. She's our point person. People come into town. This is where they ought to go right away. They want to do some business. Mm, there you go. That's the point person. And hopefully when that, that happens... Then it trickles on down, and she's got she's got to know what she's doing. Go ahead. You. So my suggestion would be. What do you do there again? Uh, yes. Oh yeah, I guess yeah, that's right. She just told me we're live. We're live, which okay. Oh, didn't know that. So my encouragement would be, before you start clearing any more trees, is you coming up with a real master plan. You know, I think from an architectural perspective, a land use perspective, I think doing what you're doing is great so far, 
and clearing out that land to the left makes great sense and then leveling it off and planting grass. But until we come up with, as a community, a concrete plan, I wouldn't invest more money, say, on patios or the things that could ultimately not happen in that specific area of the house. So all I'm saying is we just want to be conservative, in my opinion, in how far, how much more we do beyond the demo work or any asbestos we have to deal with, whatever it is, get that all taken care of, maybe you have, but let's, let's come up with a real, even if it's a smaller committee that presents to the town, I'd volunteer to be on that because I am invested in the community and I live on Franklin Road, but I just think we want to be able to know exactly how we're going to flesh this out. Is it going to be a combination of public and private use or just town use? We need an answer to that before we can keep going any forward. And the, again, this is why this is the second one. This is what we're trying to find out. As I said, I have a little bit of more money left and you know, I'm trying to figure out where do we want to go with that. There's no doubt. Maybe, we, maybe that's what we spend the money left on it. Maybe we hire somebody to do a, quote, a, a, a master plan. I'm not sure. Um, that's what I'm, this is what we, you see value in it. So where's the kitchen in relationship to the barn? Should the, we be thinking about joining the two? They used to be joined. They used to be joined. There was a connection between the side of the house to the barn. So to me, that was logical. Use that kitchen for the barn when, once you go going forward. Again, I'm getting my ideas going again here. The barn, if you saw those pictures, are like Gibbet Farms and all that. This barn is set up for events. It's two doors. You can open the front, you can open the back. The back leads out to a gazebo, because there's a lot of beautiful land out there. It just needs to be manicured. You go get your married. You go get married out there. You come walking back into this barn, down this beautiful little path into this barn where everybody's sitting here waiting. The restaurant. Next, right there at the house, caters to this yeah. event. Okay. They come back in here, they walk in, and they cater to it. That's just an idea. But I can't tell you that idea. You have to tell us. I, did. You did. I know you did. <laughs> you did. But this is all your, this is your taxpayers' money, so I... <laughs> I'm getting to a point where I gotta need some direction and maybe the master plan is the direction. I think maybe that whatever money I have left and do that, that we go find somebody to do a master plan and then present that to you. You're getting tired of listening to me. So I know for myself when I heard about the barn originally when it was going to be developed and we were going to potentially bring the barn over to the Warren Woods, it was like, how can we use it and create something similar to what Holliston has? Because as has been said already, that is a great facility and it's busy. Um, and their barn, I think, is in, in worse condition than our barn is or in regards to um, like the floor and stuff. So I like the idea of a multi-use. I like the idea of getting volunteers involved to work with you because we have a lot of great volunteers. We've already had one willing to step up to sort of get the vision of the community. I think we're getting it here tonight, but I think there's more that can be sort of pulled together to create that vision. Um, I also, just the whole idea of multi-use, so can we create a venue that different groups can come in? Can we work on the public-private partnership? Can we do something with Upswing Farm, who is a member of our community? There are many people here in Ashland who have their CSA through Upswing Farm, so can we bring them even more into our community? I like the idea of not doing too much else I know the buildings are now shored up, so there's no weather getting in, anything like that. I think spending any more money on changing anything, we need to wait until we have a better plan of what we want to do with that full property. I myself was a little disappointed when I saw all the clearing happen and all the trees go away. Um, when I, you know, I just heard you talk about the, the, the stone wall okay, it's great that it's six feet deep, but do we really want to expose six feet on the other side when we've talked about putting sidewalks in from the middle school all the way to the community center? 
So, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Um, as I look at that space to have parking right there in the front, I don't know that that makes sense for that space, right? If anything, you might want to have the patio and an area for outdoor receptions to the side of the barn rather than parking right there. So I think a little more discussion and maybe a committee of a few people to sort of really create what we want this space to be before we spend any more money on it. The parking, of course, is just, that would be, how do you say it? Hidden behind some landscaping. Because nobody wants parking, and I, I know I, there's a couple of places that stick in my mind. You're parking right in front, facing the street, and you put your headlights on, and people get hit by it. That's a landscaping issue. I'm not worried about that. That's something that's down the road. You would, you do not want to, you want the, the end product should look like a 1750 yacht house, saved. You don't want to see, you want, even the lighting should be made so it looks, it belongs there. Nobody wants to see a sea of cars. And so, again, when they do the master plan and when you start to do planning and laying out your design, your plan design, you would certainly make it so that there's very little to look at except a house and a barn. And that's, again, my goal in being on the planning for as many years, I don't want to see cars. I want to make sure that there's enough parking spaces to make it a viable businesses, but I don't want to see it. Anybody else? Next step? Yeah. I just want to ask a question. So we presented like municipal uses and then also um, private uses. Was there any, who here felt like the municipal use resonated with them the most? Like things like a community center or senior center? It's okay, Claudia, it's okay. Um, okay, so one and a half, okay. Because Susan, you're kind of like, eh, halfway there. So, and then on the other hand, how many of you th would like to explore a little bit more of a private, private use? Okay. Mixed. 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 So mixed, so I'm not necessarily saying you can't have any kind of municipal thing, but we're talking about whether or not we're going to have a town-owned facility that is going to be used as a town facility that we need to maintain and stuff. If, if we, or a private, a private use against, again, we can continue to develop a partnership where we could use it, potentially. That's well, you can always ask the town of Holliston how they utilize their, I mean, it goes to some of the historical society. So... Go ahead, Steve. So, Dave, it seems like the, the consensus is that you know, further discussion, a, a, a group uh, to assist you. And we've got one volunteer already. If there's anybody else in the audience that wants to volunteer, okay, you've, we've got a committee already. We've got a group. So I think, you know, I don't know if we have to do a whole select board uh, appointment process, but it might be it might be a good idea that we we do that and you know take take names and numbers and and we can get it done real quick. If you're interested, I would email David David Foster G Foster at AshlandMass.com. Thank you. I am a good friend of mine on the board. All right, um, I guess we're kind of getting close to the end here. Um, I just want to thank you all. I mean, this is, this is nice to see. And, it's, and, and you guys have been very helpful tonight. And it's been good, it's a good turnout. And, and, and I, I'm very pleased to think that there's, there's this much enthusiasm of saving this. Because like, it's, it's, it, well, it, it well is worth saving. This could put Ashland on the map, even though we're already on the map. But this could be a little bit bigger. 
It is, it is, and it could be a big venue if it's done properly. I mean, we literally that Gilbert, that Gilbert Farms, um, they've had some very famous bands play there and musicians, and they get a lot of them from the uh, uh, the Melody Tent and the Music City uh, that's up in Maine and stuff. So, why can't we do that? Why can't we provide that? And I think we can. So again, I want to thank you all very much for coming out tonight.